influencer boxing shtick is up after multiple years of parading around as a faux boxer, beating other non-boxers, chasing fame and riches. On February 26, the fake boxer gets exposed in front of a global audience. The gig is up. Tommy Fury, you've met your match. Problem child, Jay! actual boxer in this fight. I said what I said, all right? Because when you really look at the facts, Jake Paul is more of a real boxer than Tommy Fumbles is, was, or ever will be. Don't believe me? Then I got hard evidence right here. This is what I was born to do. I'm a fighting man through and through. What are your dreams in this professional sport? What do you want to accomplish? Undisputed world champion. I know it sounds stupid, but I would not be in the game if that wasn't my dream. I take zero issue with Fumble saying his goal is to become a world champion. Jake Paul has said the same thing. I'm going to become a world champion, so... But I do take issue with Fury's ensuing actions, which runs counter to that goal. Because only a couple of months after saying that, Tommy put his boxing career on pause and joined the illustrious cast of Love Island reality TV show. Mind you, Tommy's only 20 years old this time, a prime age where serious and dedicated boxers are honing their skills. Tommy was not, he was doing cringy shit like this. There's always gonna be another mountain. I'm always gonna wanna make it move. Ain't matter how fast I get there. It's ain't about what's waiting on the other side. Ah. <laughs> I have been up every single day at 4.30, 5am for the past 15, 16 weeks, putting miles in. In the pitch dark, my coat on, my hat on, miles and miles and miles down that road, no headphones. He's all that I'm thinking about. 16 weeks ago, eh? Just rewind the clock from the day Tommy uttered those words and you're in mid-October. One month before Fury fought in Dubai. If Tommy was really running miles in the pitch dark with no headphones, straight Rocky style, then how in the world did he come in almost seven pounds overweight in a scheduled fight against Paul Bamba? Missing weight by half a pound or even one pound is one thing, but seven pounds? <sighs> yeah. That dude is straight lying to us about his work ethic. It should be a knockout when you don't make weight. That sucks. You're about seven pounds overweight in the world. How good of a coach is Peter Fury? How much, how much of his time does he dedicate to you boys? He, uh, he's a very, very, very good coach, you see. Uh, he spends a lot of his time, well, basically all of his time, training us at, here at Bolton, you know. He trains fighters in the morning, afternoon and night. Yeah, and uh, just a dedicated boxing coach, and I believe anyone who joins this camp will go on to big things. 15-year-old Tommy right there, getting asked about being coached by his uncle Peter, who at one point also coached Tyson, and I play that clip to illustrate the fact Tommy had every single resource at his disposal to be a world-class boxer. Genetics, including long-ass limbs, growing up in a pro boxing culture, access to elite trainers, and now, be honest, how much did Tommy maximize those advantages? Advantages that most boxers would absolutely kill for. He's almost 24 now, has eight pro fights to his name, and needed Jake Paul to reach his career apex. Isn't that underperforming your potential, like big time? How am I the only one that's been calling him out for this? Somebody had to do it. I am the chosen one. Somebody had to do it. Now, contrast that with Jake Paul, a self-made man, not born to an already famous family, made himself rich, then dedicated himself to prize fighting completely, has been the ultimate professional with how he trains and promotes his own fights, has used his platform to put other boxers on. Let's be completely honest, out of the two, who do you think loves the sport of boxing more? If you say Fury, you're lying to yourself. 
flat out. And for this reason, and another one which I'll get to very soon, I've made the biggest bet of my life. I've emptied my checking account, and I've put it all on the problem child, Jake Paul. How much money exactly, you ask? Over a billion, 200, a trillion, 200 billion dollars. All right, maybe not that much, but I do got $2,001 on this. And I got the proof right here. The last time I bet $2,000 was eight years ago when I barely became of gambling age. This is what I posted on my Snapchat on that fateful day. I put two wrecks on the Seahawks to win the Super Bowl, and then this happened. Pass is intercepted at the goal line. Unlike then, I'm not losing this time. And I say that with bulletproof confidence. I swear, I hear a lot of people saying, this is a 50-50 fight. This guy's a boxer, man. To those people, I say, you're completely delusional if you think this fight will be close. It was a toss-up fight 15 months ago when it was originally supposed to happen. Back then, this was my original prediction for the fight. Final prediction on fight night, the problem child, Jake Paul, scores the knockout win in the later rounds. At the time, I was under the impression the only way Jake Paul could win is if he knocked him out. Paul, as we know, has a punishing right hook, the same blow that Fury is completely oblivious to half the damn time. But don't get me wrong, I still think KO is Jake's most likely path to victory, but now 15 months later, I'm pretty damn sure Jake can outbox Tommy if he has to and win by decision. Cause he's actually improved in the ring, unlike Tommy. Just look at the last time each stepped into the ring. Jake outlanded an all-time great striker in Anderson Spider Silva, while Tommy was booed out of the building in Dubai in his glorified sparring match against yet another tomato can. And another factor. This is an eight-round fight. Tommy's never gone past six. I could see fumbles outboxing Jake early on, but once fatigue sets in, he'll lose that edge. Jake himself brings up a really good point about late rounds. And half the fight's mental, man. When, when you get past round you know, three or four and, uh, and you start to get tired, it's really just who wants it more. And a lot of the, a lot of the technique, you know, um, it, it's still there, but it really just turns into who could take the punches, who wants it, who's gonna get the W. In more simple terms, Jake has proven to have that dog inside of him. Fumbles, on the other hand, well, there's no evidence he has that same dog. Look, we've never seen him fight in a high pressure situation. We've never seen him fight after his family said they'll disown him if he loses. We've never seen him fight shortly after becoming a first time dad and the sleepless nights that come with raising a newborn. All those factors are at play, which is why I'm betting the bank account that fumbles cracks under pressure. Final prediction, Jake Paul wins by KO. And when that happens, I'm gonna cash out. And after that, the Jake Paul haters will come out in full force and say Tommy was a fraud all along and Jake Paul still hasn't beat a real boxer. I swear to you, that's exactly what's gonna happen. Keep moving the goalposts, haters, and I'm gonna just keep making money off of these fights.